All right. Okay. We're, we're, we're live on both YouTube and Facebook right now. Um, the YouTube feed is a little bit different. Things are reversed. So I'm looking at a mirror yes, image. So they are. So when you look at the screen, all the lyrics are going to be backwards. Yeah. So maybe there'll be some hidden messages that uh, you can point out to us later on. Are we going to need books? Um, no, I've got it up on the screen. Okay. So we're good. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Q. Okay. And uh, the, the, the Facebook stream actually looks a little bit better than the YouTube um, when it comes to the screen, but the quality of the video is not quite as good as the YouTube. So anyway, we're just going to go with it. Next Sunday, I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to stream um, with better equipment. But this is the best I could do with the time that I had. So uh, we're going to start service in about eight, seven, eight minutes. And in the meantime, uh, go grab a cup of coffee. Um, and, and who knows, you might actually, uh, this might actually become a habit for me. Anyway, I'm going to uh, get out of frame, get a few things I have to look after before we start. And uh, we'll be beginning uh, 10.30 like we normally do.
there's a little bit of a question mark at the end of that. Things are different this morning, not just here, of course, but in our city, in our society, in our culture, in our world. We are living through something that I certainly don't remember ever living through in my life, and I suspect that's the same for most, if not all of us. So circumstances have forced us to make some decisions about how we operate this morning and how we are going to continue to operate, not, of course, as a church, but all of us. So this morning, we've got a small group, and that's good. I didn't want a big group. We've got about 12 people here. They always wash their hands. Everybody's used hand sanitizer. Folks are not sitting too close to each other. That was something else that was really important. Yeah, people are moving apart from each other right now. We have uh, cobbled together a, uh, an online presence this morning, and I see we've got 10 people watching us on YouTube. We've got another 10 people um, watching on, on Facebook so far. And next week, uh, we'll continue to do this. I, I don't know if we're going to be here in this building next week. I suspect we will not be here in this building next week or probably the week after. But we will make that determination based on the best information we can get from the authorities and from the church itself and, most importantly, from our group, our community here. But we're trying out this experiment. I'm going to just sort of see who we've got. We've got 12 people on uh, on YouTube or watching us now. The YouTube, the YouTube stream is a little bit different than the Facebook stream. On the YouTube stream, things are reversed. So if you're trying to read along with the screen, which doesn't show up very well on the YouTube, um, it's all going to be backwards. The Facebook stream, I'm looking at that one right now, everything is the way it should be. So next week, um, we're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to, We'll try some different technology. I've got some more cameras at home, but I just didn't have time to set it all up. So, this morning I'm going to be talking to you folks here, and I'm going to be talking to you folks here, and uh, I'll be getting feedback from everybody as the week goes on to see if we can smooth out any of the kinks and get the gremlins out of the system. So, we always begin with words of welcome. So, welcome, welcome to you too. We also talk about the life and work of our congregation and we go through our announcements. Do any of you here today have an announcement you'd like me to make on your behalf? Yes, Keith. Men's, men's breakfast will be held on Thursday the 19th at Keith Basin. Okay, so let's say tentatively the men's breakfast will, will, will be available if the restaurant's open on uh, Thursday morning at 8.30 at T-Basil on St. Joseph. As always, make the decision yourself whether or not you want to go. But going forward, it seems to be gone. Any other announcements that we need to make? Just uh, to watch your email inboxes, announcements will be made by mass email, by Facebook, by outgoing phone message on the church answering machine for anything uh, that, that sort of comes along that we want you to be aware of. And I think we can probably leave it at that for now. We're going to start by singing number 232 in Voices United, Joyful, Joyful. Now, just before you start, Paul, on the Facebook group, I provided a OneDrive link to a PowerPoint presentation if you click on that, you can follow along the uh, the lyrics for the song. So I don't have it on the YouTube link, but it's on the Facebook link. You can follow along there and, and, and sing along. So, join the joy.
Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains. Let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people. He will contend with Israel. Oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I said before you, Moses, Aaron, Miriam, all my people remember now what King Malak of Moab devised, what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shechem to Gilgal. And you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before God? Shall I come with burnt offerings? With calves and year old, will the Lord be pleased with a thousand rams and ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. What does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly. Let us listen for the words of the Lord within these words. <clears throat> the book of Micah, Micah is considered to be one of the quote unquote minor prophets of the Older Testament. And like many of the books in the Older Testament, and indeed books of the Newer Testament, there are different authors at work under the same title. Micah wasn't just one figure, if Micah was a figure or a person at all. We know that within the book of Micah, there are events described that took place over hundreds of years. Some estimates have the beginnings of the book written around 700 BCE. In the part that we read, somewhere around 500-ish BCE. So 200 years have passed during this book. And this book is written in three sections that concern itself ultimately with the relationship of the people of Israel with God. We can assume always in the Older Testament a few things. First and foremost, we can assume God's love for God's people. We can assume that the people of God experienced that love of God most fully through their community, through each other, through the relationships with their kin. We can also assume they experienced that love, appreciated it most fully through their presence in the promised land, in Israel itself. That was God's grace. It was communal. It was corporate before it was individual. I think in Christianity, we maybe hold those things in balance personal salvation, communal salvation. And I know sometimes I kind of vacillate personal appreciation of God's grace, corporate appreciation of God's grace, and different and equal measures depending on the circumstance. For the authors of the Old Testament, How do you know you are blessed by God? Well, you know it because your people are getting along with each other and your people are living on the land that God promised you. That's how you know. When circumstances dictated that they weren't able to live on the land or the communities weren't getting along with each other, they assumed that God was bad. That somehow they had sinned and transgressed and the punishment for that sin Punishment for that transgression was for them to be put in isolation. There's the word. That's the word of the week. Isolation. If I can remember a time where things were, were sort of like this, it was back when SARS came out. 
remember SARS? It wasn't that long ago. And SARS, SARS was, 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 was a moment where our society was grappling with a contagion that was frightening, that seemed to come from away, that was confusing and chaotic at first, and then measures were put into place. People were careful in a way that I hadn't experienced before in my life. If you remember, it was before the internet. Well, the internet was around. It wasn't Facebook or YouTube. It wasn't social media. But the authorities were telling us to wash our hands. The authorities were telling us to stay away from large groups. And I got to say, there was some discrimination happening as well because that particular illness came from a different part of the world, and folks from that part of the world, I remember, very treated suspiciously by many people in our society. We learned from that, and thankfully, I don't see as much of that this time around. I was visiting somebody from my congregation. I was at Kerwin Karen Gordon at our church. I was visiting a very wise person from Karen Gordon at our church. And she was musing out loud, and she was saying that it seems like we're reliving those Old Testament laws these days. That there are certain people who are clean, there are certain people who are unclean. And she was worried that that perception would manifest itself in our relationships between our family members, our community, and our world. There was that infection of racism that was present back during the SARS epidemic. And there was that worry that people would be angry with each other, people would alienate each other spiritually and emotionally if there was this perception that they were sick or could make you sick. That's an old testament type story. They've got hundreds of laws about it. Now, we can interpret that a few ways. We can say, okay, those laws were there to keep the people safe. Misguided, unscientific, as they were by definition because they're thousands of years old. But again, manifestations of God's love, however misunderstood. Enter Micah. This is one of the United Church's favorite phrases. But does the Lord require of you to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with your God? How do we, during the midst of this pandemic, do justice? How do we love kindness? How do we walk humbly with our God? Be careful, each other. We love each other. We find ways to be in relationship with each other despite the isolation. Realizing that our physical distance from each other hurts and hinders relationships, but it cannot cancel those relationships. When the people of God were sent into exile into Babylon, that was part of the game. That was a holocaust. That was the end of their experience of God's grace, and it was terrifying. And there was fear that God hated them. There was fear that that would be the end of Israel, and that the dream was over. But it wasn't. They were still Israel, even if they were in Israel. When we come to this passage, the latter part of the book of Micah, they're back in the promised land, they're rebuilding the temple, they're reassembling their society, and they're putting the building blocks together, they're loving kindness, justice, and walking humbly with their God. They're affirming the relationship and they're building it upon that foundation. I find it fascinating, scary same time that here we are, a very similar situation. We are being pushed into our own exiles. We're being pushed into our homes. We're being pushed and pulled away from each other for our own good. As a church, we're not able to go business as usual. If you look at this sanctuary as being the promised land, 
completely empty. This is likely our last service for the foreseeable future, at least this one. The congregation is being dispersed, services and programs are being canceled, but the church, just like the people of Israel, is not canceled. You can't be canceled. Your relationships with each other cannot be canceled. The church is not this place. Just like Israel wasn't a place. The church is our relationship with each other, our relationship with God, our presence in each other's lives, even if that presence isn't in person. So how will we be the church during this pandemic? We will use the tools at our disposal to connect with each other. We're going to do it through YouTube. We're going to do it through Facebook. We're going to do it through phone calls. We're going to check in with each other. We're going to see who in our community is self-isolated, those who are in their homes, perhaps lonely. We're going to call them. Who knows? We may even be able to drop off care packages to make that physical connection hand to hand or arm to arm. We are going to put our trust in people who know better than we do. We are going to discern carefully where we get our information and who we trust to give it to us. We're not going to trust the splashy memes that show up on Facebook. We're going to trust the city of Ottawa. We're going to trust the government of Canada. We're going to trust our own instincts to love and to be gentle with one another. Nerves are going to be frayed. People are going to be anxious. But above all else, I have an absolute faith that people are going to love their way through this. And at the other end of this, and there will be another end of this, this season will pass. All of our relationships have the wonderful opportunity to be even stronger than they are right now. We've gone through a long period where things seem to be relatively okay, at least, at least for a lot of us. Now things are chaotic and now things are scary. And now we're going to take stock of what's really important. And when this is over, we will be able to say, with integrity, with pride, with comfort, that we did love kindness. We reached out to each other. We were gentle with each other. We carried ourselves in the way of blessing the anxiety of those around us by being non anxious presence. We have done our justice. We have listened to those in authority whose authority comes from wisdom. We have acted according for the good of all. And we have walked humbly with our God. We put our trust in God's love. Our trust that that love, that affection, is more powerful than this virus or the anxiety that comes from it. So next week, we'll be together. Maybe not this way. Probably not this way. But we'll be together. And wherever we find ourselves, God will be there. Amen. Right God is here. That's our next hymn. Number 389.
servicing, but have our Sunday offering. This week we are not doing it. We have been advised not to be passing things around to each other as well as best we can. So our operatory plates are in the back of the table. Folks have already put their envelopes in there. So we're not going to do that, but we will still sing our operatory again, and we will have our operatory in Gloria, that would be uh, 
That would be my former spouse and friend of the congregation, the Reverend Tricia Elliott. <laughs> okay, Drew, keep it down. Um, okay, so I, I think we can hear it. So let's let's start. What are some of our prayers of thanksgiving and gratitude? We as a community, as assembled here in the congregation, at the church, I should say in the building, and we as the congregation online have. What are we praying for today? Thanksgiving wise. Okay, I guess we could say we're, we're, we're glad that it's not worse than it is, so that's one. Um, Sharon Benson, thank you, Sharon, is grateful for, um, for, for all the effort that we put into the service. Thanks, Sharon. We'll add that to our prayers. Oh, and Trish says she's just trying to be helpful about the arms. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yes. This is Faye? Saskia, okay. Oh, let me get my. Right. What, what's her name again, Neil? I'm sorry. S A S K. So Saskia is away at university, she's at Toronto, and um, I can imagine there's anxiety there too, but she's okay. She's worried about me. And she's worried about you. Look at Yes. I, I'm great. My, my parents um, were vacationing in Spain. Yeah. Uh, the, early this week, they decided, okay, we, we, we should not be in Spain anymore. So they made arrangements. Uh, my mother told me, um, I don't know if this mom's, mom's not watching because mom is in the air right now. They managed to get a flight from Spain to Dublin, Ireland. I'm looking at my Irish people right now. And they flew, they were in Dublin overnight, and um, they took off from, uh, from Dublin um, at about 10.20 this morning, or 9.20 this morning to fly to Toronto. When they get to Toronto, they have a car waiting for them to go to Perth, where they live, where they're gonna be in self-isolation for a couple of weeks. So, grateful, and mom, I know she's not watching, but she'll watch it later. She uh, she said, well, Mike, I've got some bad news for you. We've spent all of your inheritance trying to get it. <laughs> and I'm like, I'd rather than do that, because we just want to. What else have we got here? Um, any other prayers that we have here? Oh, Sharon has got a nice blooming in her garden. She has a crocus blooming. No, this is uh, this is Sharon Benson. Yeah, she's got a crocus blooming over in Blackburn Hamlet. That's what. Yeah, that's right. Well, Blackburn's special, you know. It's at least they think they are. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, we've got a Trish. Trish is prayers for a uh, our bless her, uh, prayers for our new approach to communication. New approach, uh, approaches coming, praying they're well received. New ways of connecting. It is Toma Clement's birthday today. So we're grateful for Toma's birthday. Happy birthday, Toma. And I think, oh, Sharon says they have a nice southern exposure in Blackburn, so that's why. All right, prayers of concern. 
Well, the obvious, right? Frontline medical staff. Someone has suggested. What else have we got here? Any other prayers and concerns? It doesn't have to be about this. What's your brother's name, Keith? Lauren? Respond to our prayers in physical ways if we say the words the right way. 
I don't, I don't believe in that. Otherwise, people I love wouldn't get cancer, wouldn't go through terrible times. I can't reconcile that with a loving God. So how does God respond? It's my belief that God responds through the lure of love, through nudges towards compassion, through calming our fears, and inspiring us to use all of the faculties that we have, our, our creativity, our intellect, our emotions, to bring folks into health, mental, spiritual, physical health. That's, that's how God works. And God works when we have our radar up. When we have our radar up when we pray. And we can do that out loud, we can do that through song, we can do that through thought, we can do it through art. God's listening. So this is one of the ways of doing it, just like this. Holy and gracious God, your love story with your people stretches back beyond memory, beyond written word. Through the feelings of trust, an appreciation of grace, we have grown joyfully accustomed to come before you in times of joy and in times of concern. We give you prayers of thanksgiving. We share them with you. We you know that you delight with us for such things as it perhaps not being as bad as it could be. For the safety of Saskia, and her concern for her grandpa and for the concern that we all have for each other. Grateful for signs of spring, for blooming crocuses. Grateful that we can be the church in a way that stretches beyond physical presence, online through new ways of connecting with each other, old ways, writing letters, phone calls. Grateful for little celebrations that really are big celebrations, like Toma's birthday. He's celebrating with his family and we are celebrating here too. As families do, we come together in times of joy and we revel in that happiness. But as families do, we look to each other for support during times of concern. And as always, we look to you. We pray for our frontline medical staff. We pray for those who are undergoing procedures that aren't connected with this outbreak, for Lauren going to the Heart Institute this week. We pray for frayed nerves, for strained relationships, as isolation perhaps proves to be difficult for some. We pray for our Canadians who are living abroad, who are perhaps feeling even more lonely and isolated than ever before, separated from those they care about, perhaps dealing with uncertain healthcare systems too. We pray for our schools, for daycare providers, both teachers and parents, certainly for students. We pray that there be more testing available for the peace of mind that a negative result or a positive result that might give. We pray for those who are in positions of leadership, for health authorities in the city of Ottawa, for those in our municipal, provincial, and federal governments. Yes, for some feature for Justin as well. We pray for health, we pray for wisdom, we pray that we as a people listen for and respond to steady hands during perhaps chaotic times. We've gathered words, we've gathered feelings, we have gathered through song. And now, in these moments of silence, we turn it all over to you. We can't put words into our thoughts, our feelings suffice. And you will hear us.
lucky to know that in moments of insecurity, moments of confusion, we often say, I don't know what to say. Jesus thought of this. He gave us a prayer to pray. But our own words fail us. And we say it together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. For our commissioning and benediction, when it was to be annual meeting Sunday, I thought it would be a good idea for us to proclaim the new creed together. And I think it's still a wonderful idea. And we're going to do that now. So, I didn't put it up on the screen. You've got it in your hymn books. Turn to page 918. For those of you who are joining us from home, uh, you can listen. Uh, I know at least one of you knows it by heart. <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll say this together. So I'm going to ask folks to please stand as you are able. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our final hymn today is, what's the one we did 602, Blessed Be the Tide that Binds. 602.
temptation to shake hands and to hug and all the stuff that we're accustomed to doing. Unfortunately, we decided that we're going to forego the refreshments today, so we're not going to do that. Watch your emails. I will be sending out an email very early in the week that will outline what's going to happen or not going to happen around here. And if I don't see you in person for the next few weeks, my prayers are with you. I know your prayers are with me, that all of our prayers are for each other, both in the church, in our country, and in our world. They might be able to take our local meeting spaces away from us for a bit, but no one can take our church away. We will see you soon. And we'll see you soon too. I'm going to turn it around. Let's see if it's here. this off. Still got some people hanging around. All right, everybody. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut her down now. And um, next week, I think for those of you who are left, I am uh, going to experiment with some dedicated microphones so that it's going directly into the system. And um, I might use a different, uh, a different camera as well. I just need to figure that out. But in the meantime, I think this worked... Uh, this worked okay, if only that it was a, an experiment that we could sort of learn from and and, uh, and work out how to do it better next week. Anyway, I'm going to end the stream on YouTube. So goodbye, YouTubers. Thank you for joining us.
Peace. Be well. And now, Facebookers, um, again, thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you, uh, or you will see me, um, or we'll figure out ways to see each other as the weeks unfold. And I uh, really appreciate everybody's feedback about how it worked and uh, you know, perhaps how it didn't work quite as well as we had hoped, but it's a learning. And uh, again, like I said to the YouTubers, you probably heard, peace. Be well.